think the mic's on? Yep. Testing. Okay, are we on? Welcome back to another Saturday class. Let's get started. Three, three inches apart, round down. Okay, turn to your right. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, and three. Palms down, palms on your waist. Raise your right hand, side bends. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, and three. Okay, palms in front. Tilt forward. Side bends, one, two, three, switch to your right, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, palms up, inhale, exhale, again, down, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, palms up, Inhale, palms down, exhale. One last time, down. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, inhale, exhale. Palms in your waist. Okay, you're gonna do circles, waist rotations to your right. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Switch. Left side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 1, and 2. Cross your arms. Slightly bend your knees. Knee rotations to your right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, and 2. Switch. Switch sides, switch hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Palms in your waist. Neck exercises. Turn to your right. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Next, Tilton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Rotations, three counts, one, 
two and three reverse one two and three okay shake it out deep breathing inhale one two and three okay open up your stance heels out toes heels okay turning one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one and two interlace your fingers turn to your right stretch just go as far as you can one two three switch one two three switch one two three switch one more time one two and three okay stand up turn to your right you're gonna stretch then you waist if you're not flexible just go as far as you can okay try not to hold your breath switch Switch. Switch one more time. Next, turn to the middle. Just go as far as you can. You don't have to open too wide. Turn to your right. Okay, next. Turn to your left. Okay, back to the middle. Okay, you're going to bend your right knee down, toe up. Switch. Okay, switch again. This time, bring your toe down. Switch. Okay, middle. Open up. Just go as far as you can. Hold it for a couple of seconds. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, close it up. Heels in, toes, and shake it out. Okay, knee raises. Okay, up. Bring your knee up to your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Outside. One, two. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two to the sides. Bring your palms back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Shake it out. Deep breathing. One, two, and three. Okay, next we're going to do punching. Take your right fist, right palm, bring it in front of you. Okay, you're going to punch to your center of your body. Begin. Try to gaze where you punch. Okay, switch. Okay, to the side. Okay, switch. Even though you're following me, try to gaze where you're punching. Okay, next. Both palms up. Okay, they call it oblique. One hand down, one up. One down, one up. Slightly turn your waist. Begin. Okay, next, with the edge of the fist, so be this, this part, okay, to the side, again. Okay, switch, other side. Okay, next, both palms in front, one in front of the other one. Circle motions. So if you're a beginner, just take your time, one hand at a time. If you're a little bit more advanced, intermediate. And if you want to speed it up. Okay, next, with the back of the fist to the side, begin. Okay, next, switch, other side. And last punch. Okay, palms down, deep breathing, inhale. One, two, slowly. Last one, and three, palms down, slowly. Okay, horse stance. If you want to do low blocks, punching. Okay, three feet apart. Palms on the waist. Bend the knees. You're going to kick your heels out. One, two, three, and a half. And now, bend your knees. Okay, start with your right hand, punching. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. 
close. One, two, and three. Low block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Extend, close. One, two, and three. Middle block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Close. One, two, and three. High block. Ball eyebrow level. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Extend, close. One, two, and three. Okay, next, all three blocks. Low, middle, high. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three, and one, two, and three. Close, one, two, three. Okay, low block, punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, extend, one, two, and three. Middle block, Punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Close. One, two, and three. High block and punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, Two, close, one, two, and three. Palms together, open up, okay. Slightly bend your three fingers, your thumb in, okay. Press to the side, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, low, one. Two, three, four, five, and six. Back to the middle. Okay, eyebrow level. One, two, three, four, five, six. In front. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, thrust, turn, close. One, two, three. Heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in. Okay, shake it out. Deep breathing. One. Two and three. Okay, kicks are gonna be next. Bring your right foot to the back. Should be in the leaning stance. Both palms in front of you. Two punches and a kick. Front instep. Okay, six counts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, switch, left side. You're going to be kicking with your left foot. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, switch. Bring your right foot back, back to a leaning stance. Just going to kick with the heel. One, two, bring your knee up, push with the heel. Six counts. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Switch. Bring your left foot back. You're going to kick with your left foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, next. Bring your right foot back. You're going to be back in your leaning stance. Both hands up. Straight kick up. Two punches and kick up. Try not to bend the knee. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Switch. Left side. So you're going to bring your left foot to the back. You're going to kick with the left foot. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, shake it out. Bring your right foot to the back. And the run house to the waist. One, two, turn your toe. Bring your knee up. Kick to the waist. Six counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Switch. Bring your left foot back. You're going to be kicking with the left foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, last set of kicks. You do run house, but to the head. So if you're not too flexible, don't worry. Just go as far as you can. Two punches and a kick. Six counts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Switch. You'll be kicking with the left foot. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, shake it out. Deep breathing. Two. And three. Okay, get a drink of water. If you were at the academy, you would drink of water. But since you're home, try to get a drink of water quickly. We're going to go over the five stances. First form with Falcon. Second form, La Galcon. Third form, Bambukun. And fourth form, Jin Jin. Okay. Let's begin with the five stances. Okay. Feet three inches apart. Palms on the side. Again, palms up. One. Up. Two. Open. Forward. One. Back. Two. Grab. Open. One. Press. One. Two. Three. Up. One. Two. Three, one, two, salute, close, one, two, three. Set up your hands, one, bend your knees, open up, offset, horse stance, block, slice step, punch, one, step up, palm underneath, remove, turn your waist and punch, one, cross step, dragon's tail, spin, Corner back to eyebrow level. Twist stance, block, suspended, punch. Step back, one, two, up. So if you cannot jump or hop, I'm going to do it slow. One, two, bend your knees, three, 
sharp. Leaning, press, uppercut. And close. Shake it out. Deep breathing. One. Two. And three. Okay, let's do it again. Feet three inches apart, palms on the side. Okay, begin. One, two, open up. Three, turn your palms over. Press with the edge of your hand. Turn, pull, open. Press, one, two, three. Okay, up, thrust, one, two, thrust to the side. Down, one, salute, close. Okay, set up your hands, one. Bend your knees, open up to offset horse stance. Block, slice step, turn and punch. Step up, leaning stance. Remove, turn and punch, one. Cross step, two, spin. Corner back test, eyebrow level, twist stance. We're gonna do dragon, claw, suspend it. Punch, one, step back, two, set up your hands, leaning, one, bring your knee up, palm up, you're gonna hop, one, chop, leaning, press, uppercut, close, shake it out, keep breathing, one, two, and three. So if you have any questions, just remember, send a message. You can email it or place a message on the YouTube. Okay, we're going to move to uh, more Falcon, first form. Okay, feet three. Again, feet three inches apart. Keep your spine straight. One. Salute. Two. Three. Step one. Two. Three. Step back. One. Two, three. Bend your knees. Turn. Offset. Horse stance. High block. Low block. Twist stance. Dragon. Set up your hands. Step back. Block. Scoop. Step up to leaning. Press and uppercut. Remove or low block. Leaning. Turn and punch. Suspend it. Uppercut. Remove, turn, punch, suspend it. Okay, horse stance, lean to the rear, drunken fist, lean to the forward. Remove high block, turn, punch, squat down, uppercut, slide step, remove, punch, squat down. I'm gonna come back to the middle of the room so you guys can see. Trapping hand. Cross, okay, open, one, two, three, turn, punch, step to the rear, remove, elbow, corner back test, palm, high block, outside, hold your balance, jump, step, press, trap, back fist, remove, turn, punch, step, one, two, slice step, palm, Scoop, press, kick, punch, dragon, step back, one, slice the turn, one, two, three, one, two, three, close. Okay, shake it out, deep breathing, inhale, one, inhale up, exhale down gently. Two, and three. Okay, next we do a third form, Bambukan. Okay, feet three inches apart. Okay, palms down. One, two, three. Step, one. Up, two. Switch, one. Two, one. Two, leaning. Step through. You're going to step through, punch. One, two, three. Elbow, 
like this. Set up your hands, thrust, boom, high block. Change your fist, scoop. One, one, two, three. Punch, one, step up, uppercut, one. Step, one, two, three. Switch, one, two, three. Step, one, two, three. Chop, scoop, double elbow, step up, pull, one, one, two, three. Step, sweep, one, two, step, one. Kick, step, one. Hook, one, two, three. Step, one, two, one, two. Middle block, one, three punches, one, two, three. Switch, one, scoop, one, two, three, switch, one, two, chop, one, hook, two, three, grab, up, one, two, three, punch, step, forward, elbow, and close. Check it out. Deep breathing. One, two, and see what's it Fourth form next. Yep. <laughs> so, fourth form. It's called Jen Jen. Okay. All right. Wall form. Okay, feet three inches. Step back a little bit. One, two, three. Step one, two, salute. One, two, three. One, sweep, one, two, up, cross, one, two, step, one, two, three, offset, turn, one, two, three, one, two, pivot, one, two, thrust, close, okay, up, one, two, three, press, one, open, Turn, one, to the chin, one, two, chin level, scoop, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, up, and down, remove, one, two, three, okay, up, one, close, step, one, two, offset. Double block, step, thrust, close, one, side fist, one, two, offset, double block, step, thrust, close, one, two, three, fix the mic a little bit, step, one, scoop, uppercut, remove, one, two, Switch, scoop, uppercut, remove, one, two, step. Actually, you're going to palm. It's actually a punch, see? Block, one, two, three. One, two, three. Step, one, two, three. Punch, one, two, three. Corner back fist, one, two, slice step, punch, remove, strike down, back fist, cut hand, one, the mic's coming off, jump, one, two, three, one, two, cross step, one, two, three. One, two, three. Set up your foot, your hands. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Up, step one, two. Open one, two. Salute. One, two, and three. Shake it out. 
See what's coming in. Mike's on. So, yeah. So, this is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of times when people do things like yoga or some of these, they talk a lot about, or even qigong, they talk about a lot about breathing because it's specifically tied to breath and movement. Actually, in kung fu, there is breath and movement, but mainly if it's a breathing exercise, like when we do an inhalation, and an exhalation is tied to your movement. When you're doing forms, the only part of the breathing that's important is the exhalation when you issue power or you're striking, you want to exhale, or you exhale on the, the point of impact. But when you're doing something like a horse stance, you should just let your body breathe naturally. The inhalation really is not tied to any specific movement. When you start to move, that's when the, the breathing becomes more important. It's like running and jogging. You know, you breathe, is it you breathe on the, on the step or you breathe? No, you just breathe as the body uh, utilizes the oxygen and in the body. So if you're in a horse stance, you just breathe naturally unless you're punching. Then you would really focus on the transition as part of the exhalation or inhalation. But if you're doing something that's pretty complicated in the moment, you're going up, exhale, inhale, exhale. So inhalation and exhalation really depends on how your movements are being um, executed. So sometimes, if I'm here, I could just be in a relaxed mood. But once you're done with that movement and you exhale, as if it was the power movement, then they, that would be done. Once you exhale, now you're in a position. No longer do you need to focus on whether you're breathing in and out because now you're um, only focusing on that. Now, if I'm here and that's my position because this is a position, and the position is if someone throws a punch, there's your block. But once you've blocked, you're in position. You don't need to because you're not exerting any energy specifically to do anything, then you don't have to actually be concerned about the breath. But as a response, if I'm here and I go like this, you could breathe, inhale, and exhale with the same movement depending on what your uh, motive is and the intent of movement. So that's something your body will over time adapt. So breathing really is more specific to um, what you intend to do with the motion rather than uh, does it happen now or then. So it does happen on the uh, exertion side of the movement or the, uh, like you're lifting weights, you would exhale on the outward stroke and inhale. But if you're just holding it, you could just kind of be stationary. You're not really breathing in or out other than enough to keep your body uh, supporting oxygen to the muscles and so forth. So that's something... Uh, we call that natural breathing. So natural is kind of has to be interpreted. So on that note, that's about um, as simple as you can get with that. If you were doing something like and we, we call the iron wire opening and we're going mm, huh, tick. So those type of things, you actually will be coordinating breath and movement because those are designed specifically for one inhalation, one exhalation. Whereas um, in a general form, you could run through that thing with just running through the motions because if we were talking about when does that happen, I wouldn't be able to talk you through these forms because my breath and the movement and talking and so forth has to be somewhat coordinated. So my focus in the talking is in the larynx and trying to get the, the voice uh, sound out. But the body movement is just happening as a course of what I'm doing. But I am still breathing, but not breathing in the sense that uh, I'm focusing and in the way that uh, the person asked that question. So don't have to overthink it. That's really um, because then you start to uh, get a little stressed about, should I, am I doing it correctly? Just let your body uh, do what it sh uh, should do, and uh, things will be okay. All right, so let's... Uh, what have we gone over? We've gone over the, uh, the different forms. 
uh, the Moi Fa Kun, second form in Bangbu Kun. We ran through all of some of the, uh, the sections to learn them. Hopefully, if you've memorized the form, and refining those movements is really building the timing. Uh, with the fourth form, just opening it, we're going to bend one, two, three. One, two. Okay, bend, right? Open, open and sink. So when you sink, sinking is when your breath actually would settle, but you just really, one of the concepts is to hold your breath here, but not because you're just uh, doing a lot of inhalation, exhalation. It's just a focus point where your breath is in this area called the Danten. That's really your center of gravity. So when your body settles and you're in this position, so that's one thing. When we're in our stances, don't tense the legs. In fact, if we stood in this, when we're in the stance and we just tense the legs, you're not in your stance. When you go into the stance, you have to relax your joints so you settle into your stance. And then the musculature in the stance will start to form, allowing the muscles to use um, the correct tension and the correct amount of strength to sustain the position. Because in a sustained position, you're almost... In, in the most relaxed state you can be, because if I'm here and I want to move, I can do that. If I'm tense, then I can't move. You can feel the, you can feel the difference. So don't tense when you're going into any of your positions. Relax, execute, and then let it go. So that one of the things that we talk about, you know, when you throw a punch, let it go at the end, because once, if you were hitting something, boom. You don't have to like punch it and then think you're going to walk through that bag. Or you hit a, a person, you don't hit and then think that the power is constantly cycling in. On impact, that's it. You transferred the energy of the movement to the strike, to the strike. The same thing happens if you were to break an object. When you hit it, it either breaks or your hand breaks. It's one or the other. So the thing is, you hit the object, it breaks, that's it. There's nothing... There's nothing beyond that. So that's kind of what explosive power is, focused power. You know, it's like a, you know, like a firecracker. You light it, it explodes, then it's done. So that's why they call it kind of like a form of explosive power. Because once you generate the power, there's no need to maintain any, uh, what I call the latent energy. You don't need to continue to put energy into that because you need to conserve it and reuse you know, the uh, stored energy to recycle. So your body has to be recycling the energy that you're creating by um, allowing your body to uh, recover and recuperate with, with as quickly as possible without actually maintaining tension. So that's what happens. When we push out like this, we actually reach a point, then it's gone, then it allows you to go backwards reaches this point, then it re reverses. So there's a cycle. That cycle in this is breath and movement. So if we're talking about that, that's we're in motion. But just standing in a horse stance, no, you don't really need to be breathing uh, heavily or focusing on inhalation, exhaling to the legs. Now when we're here, you're when you sink, there is the sort of the compensation for what has to happen here. Because when I'm pushing out like this, if I didn't focus it directionally in the legs, then your body isn't floating the way, way it should be. If I go like this and I tense like this and I'm really fo not concerned with the movement, because what is the movement creating? You're creating a force in a direction. So if the force goes out, if I don't control my body to the extent that it's balancing, counterbalancing movement, my force would go like this and I would actually do this. If I don't compensate for the movement going forward, if I didn't control it and I hit some, an object, that's what would happen. Because it's that idea of equal opposite response. 
So your body has to balance that. But that's, that's something that we don't realize that's happening because we're not tipping over when we're doing it. So there is, there is that kind of tension in the body that's really, I, that, that's a responsive tension or responsive action. Because for every action, there's this form of equal opposite reaction. So when we punch, when we punch, when we punch, we don't need to uh, really, we're excellent, well, we don't really think of that as just compensating for the, for the equal opposite reaction because the body is not tipping over. But when we do this, it actually is really an exchange between the two, two sides of the body. So the musculature is different from just sitting and tensing in a position. That's really uh, what creates stiffness and rigidity. Now some styles actually will punch and then they hold the position. That's actually a stylistic thing. That's their approach to it. But in Kung Fu, or at least the, the way we teach, is that when you punch, it's gone, and then you re recycle, and you're gone, and it's recycling in your body, eventually develops the response to that. And that's a better way of uh, building naturalness and move movement and agility, because when you move, you have to be able to cycle from one to the next without any, like, getting bogged down. So when we do the forms, that's what we're learning. If I go like this, boom, 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 there are transitions, move the leg, move the body. So when I, so am I breathing through all of this? So at some point, I might exhale because there's a lot more power. But because the movements are fairly balanced, I can cycle through without actually uh, wasting that breath. And say, say you're sparring or you're using technique. If you're focusing on that breath, I can guarantee you that before you get through 30 seconds or 45 seconds or a minute of that exchange, you're probably getting a little bit winded or you're a little exhausted because why? Your breath is not coordinated enough and your body's tense. So when your body's tense, what happens? Your body wastes energy. And what energy is it using aside from the nutrients your body is providing it? Oxygen. So your oxygen level and your muscular level is in conflict. And what, what hands up action, you could end up in what they call oxygen deficit. So someone that does a sprint, then you have to recover your body goes into an oxygen deficit because you utilize oxygen and energy to create that speed, but yet you weren't able to get enough oxygen into the, into the body to create that balance. So in doing form, you try to create that balance, mainly because it's called the upper, upper chi and the lower chi merging to balance. So that's really what we're trying to do when we do our form, control, regulate, you know, our musculature, our skeletal structure, find and create positions and postures, learn how to move, shift the weight, unbalance, move. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty complicated stuff for, if we think about it, but it's actually an amazing thing for um, how we develop, you know, the physical action, you know, the, the mind-body connection. And then along with that, when we talk about, you know, you know, building intelligence through movement, not only you develop, develop an intelligent body, but the way you think, the mindfulness of this, it actually helps to, to strengthen uh, your brain and, uh, you know, some of the, the analytical skills that you need to think and to, to interpret things. So it, it's really a kind of a tool for, so especially for kids, kids that are doing Kung Fu, it's more than just a physical thing. It's it's a, it's a nurturing of the mind and the body. But in the mind side of it, you, I talk about triangles, I talk about squares, I talk about, yep. Yep. From who? Okay, yeah. Okay. So horse stances, uh, hi Jasmine, horse stances are a training skill. Horse stance is called um, stillness and meditation or posture training. So think of our musculature and think of muscle memory and think of 
um, what we do with uh, muscle memory. Muscle memory is supporting a position uh, so your body recognizes it. So if I do this, so we think of horse stance as this. Well, this is a suspended stance. Any one of our stances can be used individually to train the posture and the leg position. So the horse stance is so your body recognizes this configuration. It does build strength and stability, but the strength doesn't come from the total endurance of standing there for 45 minutes. What a, a horse stance training is, it teaches you to go into a stance and relax into the stance so you develop a lower center of gravity and, a, and more stability. And what, how, how that happens is that anything, any position that your body goes into that it doesn't recognize or doesn't know, because even though we all think we're, we're knowing, um, you really don't know until you go through it. So what you don't know is how much strength do I use, what muscles are used to create that over time. Your body will learn to delete any of the excessiveness to sustain that position. The first time you go into a cat stance, you don't know how much stance it is. You look at someone doing it, you're in a cat stance, and you're like this. You say, well, I can only take it for so long because um, my legs are getting tired. Well, they get tired the first time around because when you bend like this, it doesn't know how much tension it should use. The muscles I'm speaking to doesn't know. Until it, you settle into the stance and then more of the body relaxes and then it starts to delete the excessiveness, the erroneous, erroneous motion, or the erroneous tension in the body. That applies to every single thing that we do. That's why it ends up um, becoming natural and you approach this level of understanding on a physical level. It's like someone, um, like, like painting or drawing. If you use too much tension in your hands, you're not going to create the correct stroke or the correct feeling. But at the same time, if you held it too tight, what happens? Your hand fatigues because the musculature in your hand doesn't, is using too much strength. And you don't really know how to do that. So, so someone like, uh, like a child, when they first learn to write, what's the first thing? You can tear the paper, you break the lead off the, the, finger, uh, the tip of the pencil, or you snap the crayon. All of that has to do it because you don't know the feeling of that movement and don't know how uh, much to use or how much to... Um, so that's all a learning part of doing this. So a horse stance is designed for you to build a position and then eventually delete any excess. So does it take any strength? It does take strength. And what's it related to? What does the strength relate to? It relates to the weight of your body. So the heavier you are, the stronger your legs have to be to support your body weight. The lighter you are takes very little strength. So that's a relationship of weight and position. Now, once you've established the weight and the body relationship, your musculature has to determine how much strength it has to uh, use to sustain that. So there's a point of 50-50 and then a point of uh, using gravity. So when we go into a position to lift or drop, your body can go into... Uh, Sustent, suspended animation or suspended position where at some point you become free falling and releasing. So all of this comes into play as part of physical action. So if that helped to answer that, um, your horse stance training is really to let your body recognize the position so that if I go into a sliding step, I'm not actually tense. It's just enough to keep me from collapsing and then moving. Once I move, once I move, then the legs are free to move. What has them happen if you tense your legs like this, then you throw your punch, you're like this. The legs don't move. Why don't they don't move? Because your hips are tense, your, your knees are bent, but there's no mobility. And the only way to go from this leg to this leg is in the hips. So that's where movement and um, stationary positioning is really a combination, that's a balance. Movement and stillness. Now the stillness part of it shouldn't be uh, storing too much tension because then you won't be able to move. 
So you've got to find that fine line. So the agility of the body, like if I'm here, you have to know once it reaches a position, then it knows when to move from there. So that's kind of a, it's really a skill. And if I were to take that into um, prevention of age-related degeneration, if you're, you're at the age where your body isn't comfortable, it's um, losing balance, and it's not very agile, it really ties down to the amount of tension you have in your body and how you can control that physical mechanism. And if you can control that, uh, people that do martial arts, like what we're doing as a prevention of age-related degeneration, becomes something that beco becomes innate in your body. It becomes the natural course of how you move, how you relate to your body's actions. And that's a tremendous benefit. So anyone that's watching that's, say, 40 years old or not, or 35, 40, it's actually a great way of practicing without focusing totally on, you know, how physical and how how much of a martial skill there is, because there's that side of it that actually is um, a tremendous benefit. Okay, so with that said, once, we in, once we're in our horse stance and we cross the hands like that, what we're learning when we speak of movement is really the same relationship that we're talking about our legs. How do we move effectively with the correct amount of strength without creating too much tension, but yet be able to focus the direction of the movement. And we can see that movement is generated and it's very systematic and organized in the body, right? right? So how, how do we create consistent movements how do we consist develop those consistent movements position direction so forth we control it by manipulation our ma manipulating our skeletal structure but what controls the physical structure your skeleton are your muscles and what controls the muscles? What com controls the muscles is what the neurons up here that produces the motor skill that the brain says, okay, this is what you need to do to do that. So then over time, it sorts it out, just like we're doing the horse stance. Use the correct amount of strength, the right muscle groups to create that action. Now, because we're talking about total body movement, how complex is the program that's required to do that single posture? It's pretty complicated. We can't really imagine how complicated it is writing some kind of a, a program because it's probably impossible to do because there's so many things going on simultaneously. So if you talk about breath and you talk about movement, you're talking about exhalation, inhalation, you're talking about um, going from one position to the next, the right side, the left side, the upper body, the lower body, the number of um, you know, components, the small bones in the torso that need to be adjusted to create a leaning position, a leaning position, a tilted position, a sinking, a rounding. How much of that is um, you know, being programmed into the body? All of it is, but it happens through a course of going through these actions over time because we're creatures of habit. We go through a motion over and over again, and then the brain, whether it really knows what you're doing or not is, a, is, is another discussion, but the thing is, that's what it thinks it's supposed to do, so it starts to do that. And if you do it long enough, it continues and continues to build. And then you have all these little components of things that you've built up up here. Then they start to work together, and then you get a result. So you can, it's a very complex um, thing that's happening up here uh, to do or replicate anything that I'm teaching you. But at the same time, and you can imagine that this uh, idea was developed hundreds of years ago, and they didn't do it with science. They did it through trial and error. So that's how the human body kind of evolved and so forth. But at the same time, you take that concept and bring it into today, we have the, the science, we have the things that kind of support it. But yet, with the science that supports it, how many people that are scientists know how to do this? They probably 
don't know how to do this because they haven't done it. So that's really, everything is very specific to um, the ideas and the concept. So that's, uh, uh, you know, what we get out of doing this. And, you know, that just, that concept just came from uh, a question talking about two things, well, two questions. One about breath, one about movement, and well, the whole stance should be uh, practice the way it's we were just talking. So you just learn to move your body uh, the way it's designed. Okay, so on that note, that was uh, probably a little bit deep for the kids, but you know there are adults watching and so forth, so forth. So um, keep practicing your forms. Uh, we're going to continue to do this, uh, and we do it Tuesdays and Thursdays. Stay tuned. You can review this, and you can. Uh, follow mine who ran through the forms and you know mine has got great uh, body posturing so you follow that and you can't go wrong uh, talk to you next time thumbs up and YouTube subscribe